So this is going to be both a spoiler review, but really it's not going to be about the like the whole movie. It's going to mostly be about the ending, because the ending, I think, to me is kind of something that is going to divide people, because even though the ending to this movie was, I would say, pretty far from being the ending I was expecting... There's sort of a weird sense of brilliance there, and I want to talk about it so that you understand. Before we get to it, though, if you have not seen the movie and you do not want to be spoiled, click off the video because we're going to go into the literal last, like, 15 minutes of the movie, last 10 minutes or so. So if you haven't seen it, I have a non-spoiler review up so you can check that out and see if it's for you. But like I said in that review, it's a very weird movie because I think most people are not going to like it. But there will be a group of people that will like it because there are things to like about it. Genuinely, there are things to like about this movie. And I think the issue with it is that as I'm watching it, I'm like, you know, this this really isn't so bad. Like, what was the big deal, you know? And I, I saw some things there where it's like, okay, well, if you move some stuff around, if you edit some things around, take out the musical stuff. Even I didn't hate the music, but if you take that out or maybe do less of it, it could have actually been a pretty decent movie. And I really feel that way. Like I really feel like this movie was salvageable. But at the end of the day, what they what the final product turned out to be was not very good. And I would be interested if someday we get like a behind the scenes or something so that we find out just what the hell happened here, right? So let's get into it. So the jury finds Arthur guilty. He starts laughing and then suddenly there's a big explosion. Find out that it's a car bomb and the side of the courthouse is blown up. People are knocked on their ass, pandemonium. And Arthur stumbles outside and this group of, of guys dressed like the Joker who were obviously inspired by what he did two years prior bring him into their car and they drive off. At one point, he tries to escape the car and he does and they chase after him because the, the symbolism here is that Arthur, even though he's saying that he did all these things, he is trying to escape the fact that he's Joker. He's trying to get away from being Joker. And it seems like when Harley left the courthouse, he wasn't really sure why. So he goes down the road and he goes to the steps and there she is. How did he know she was going to be there? No clue. Why did she even go there? She didn't want to be with him anymore. No clue. It's one of those, okay, it's kind of movie stuff, you know. And she, tur she, she confesses to him, it turns out, that she lost attraction for him because he killed the whole sexual drive that she had because he is now no longer Joker. He's revealed that it's just Arthur and that Joker's not an alternate personality, which, by the way, says a lot about her being absolutely nuts despite being a psychiatrist. But the real Harley Quinn, or not the real Harley Quinn, but, you know, the one from the original animated series in the comics, different story. Or at least, not different story, but she's similar in that her being a therapist is kind of like what draws her to Joker. And then Joker kind of charms her. But he gets rejected by the Gaga version of Lee. And he ends up getting caught. Goes back to Arkham. And when he's there at Arkham again, I was thinking, are they going to reveal that this is all a dream? And there's probably going to be an interpretation of this film by some people. Because I, I have a feeling that in a few years, there's going to be a video to come out. Maybe I'll make it for shits and giggles. Called The Secret Brilliance of Joker 2. Right? Because there is, like I said, there's brilliance here. And I don't really review that many art house films. I haven't seen that many art house films. I've seen a few. But a lot of them do things like this where they have movies that are sort of artistic tone poems. They're up for interpretation. You know what I mean. So I'm thinking, well, maybe the whole thing was a dream. Maybe like everything from the beginning where we see him at Arkham, the whole thing was just in his head. Because that's a, a thing about the Arthur character, right? Both in this film and the previous one. 
He's walking because he has a visitor. Now, they don't ever reveal who the visitor is. I don't think it would be Harley because she lost interest in him. So, who is it? His mom's gone. It's not the girl from the apartment. So, in my head, it's like, well, who could this be? We never find out. We never find out. This other criminal who at first, I thought it was the, I actually thought for a second it was the guy who played Harvey Dent, like the, the 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 junior DA or whatever in this movie, but it wasn't him. I thought it was for like a second. And he says, I got a joke for you. And the joke is about meeting a, a guy who dressed up like a clown and was used to be great. And then he tells him he got what he deserved. And then he stabs Arthur in the stomach. Arthur goes down. And then the guy who stabs him starts laughing hysterically. And... Then we see the Glasgow smile. Now, some people have said that this is a prequel to The Dark Knight and that the guy who stabbed Joker, or I'm sorry, who stabbed Arthur, not Joker, Arthur, would later on became the Joker of that movie. And while that seems like a cool idea to tie it in, I don't think that's the case at all. I really don't think that's the case because of where the timeline takes place. Remember, this film is only two years after Thomas Wayne's murder and not enough time has passed. And also it's implied based on the music and how people are dressed that this movie takes place either in the late 70s or early 80s. Remember, it's got the vibe of Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, but those movies came out in the 70s. So the latest I could see this movie taking place is like 83, 84, right? The TVs, like the technology, it just feels like it's in the past. So it would not make sense that, you know, and there's also other things in the Dark Knight trilogy that work differently. So it just, there's too many other stories that tell us that it's not tied to the Dark Knight. However, the guy who stabbed Arthur, it really seems like he is going to be the one to become the real Joker, the clown prince of crime. With the story being, and, and by the way, DC Comics actually did this. Not exactly this, but a very similar story. The idea here that I think Todd Phillips was going for is that the guy who stabbed Arthur is going to later on become the real Joker and that Arthur was Joker, and but not the Joker, not the clown prince of crime. You understand what I'm saying? That instead, this movie's about Arthur sort of sparking the creation of copycats, like the guys who saved him that were dressed like him, or like the people at the end of the first movie who were all sort of, you know, uh, on the streets, you know, causing mayhem and anarchy. And so the idea is, it reminds me of a quote that Tupac had in the 90s when he said, I may not change the world, but I may spark the mind that changed the world. I think what Todd Phillips was going for is I think the idea here is that Arthur was never the Joker, even though the end of the first movie makes us think that he was a Joker, a, uh, you know, an alternate Elseworlds version of the Joker, but that he would be the one to inspire the man or men who would become Joker. And when you look at it from that perspective, it kind of makes the ending kind of kind of cool. Like, I'm just being real with you. That's why I'm mixed on it, because the ending reverses a lot of the development, or lack thereof, whatever, the arc of the first film, but in a way still makes it a prequel, and in some ways makes what Arthur did more powerful, because it's not just one man shooting somebody in a subway or on television. It's a man who sparked a revolution of crime in Gotham. And in some ways, that's actually more dangerous. It's actually more scary that they're listening to this guy who's obviously mentally ill, but he sparked a revolution. So he created... He, so Arthur is not the Joker. He created the Joker without meaning to. And it cost him his own life. You know, again, when you look at the ending like that, it's... It's not that, I get what he was going for if that's what he was going for. However, 
The movie still has problems. I'm not sitting here making this video to tell you, oh, it's actually secretly brilliant, but there is brilliance there. That's what I was trying to say in my in my non-spoiler review. Like there's the movie's complex for me because there's a lot of things about the movie I did not like. And I said that on my non-spoiler. And there are but, but and there are things I did like, but I feel like it, it really feels that there is a good movie in there. There is a good film in within the confines of that of Joker 2. There is a good movie there with some editing and fixing of the script. Maybe it would have been much better, even with the message I just said. However, that's how I took the ending. I don't think it's a prequel to Dark Knight. It just it doesn't make sense for it to be. But the message is really not all that different from the first movie. In fact, if you look at it like that, it would make sense that this would be the springboard because they sort of already do this earlier in the movie with the character of of Lee of Harley because she is enamored by by Joker by what Arthur does she's enamored by the character and the TV movie and all that you know uh and she becomes the first sort of super fan I mean there's other fans but I mean the, and obviously the guy who stabbed him was a super fan too because he became he did become the Joker if that's what happened that's the way I'm interpreting the film. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm not, I am not saying that I am wrong, but this is like a piece of art. And people are going to love it, and people are going to hate it. Mostly hate, but this could work. And maybe in a few years, I'll come around on it. We'll see. Take care.